Okay, we're now in the middle of chapter 12, where Satan gets thrown down to earth as a result of a war in heaven. So since we're in the middle of chapter 12, let's just do a refresher of the story so far. Revelation 12.1 A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman, and that woman is Israel, clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars, which would be the twelve tribes of Israel. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, whom we know as Satan, with seven heads and ten horns on its heads, seven diadems. His tail swept down, so this is a Satan-initiated power. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. So that was Satan's army of demons. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. Now, that is his historical account of King Herod uh, attempting to kill baby Jesus uh, through his degree, decree of killing every male child under the age of 12, correction, under the age of 2, in the Bethlehem area. She gave birth to a male child, whom we know as Jesus, Yeshua, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne, which is, as we know, that is historical. That's Jesus' ascension to heaven after his uh, death, burial, and resurrection. And so now we shift gears into the future. And the woman, who is the Jewish remnant here, fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God in which she is to be nourished for 12,000, correction, 1,260 days, which is the final three and a half years of Daniel's 70th seven, the time of Jacob's trouble. All right, so with that as a background, let's go to verse 7, chapter 12. Now, so now is after we just read in verse 6, uh, where the woman escaped uh, into the wilderness to a place prepared by God. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. So just let's refresh uh, ourselves on Michael. Michael in Jude 9 was the archangel that was contending with the devil, uh, disputing about the body of Moses. Uh, Daniel chapter 10 uh, we read about the prince of the kingdom of Persia who withstood me. This is being another angel talking. 21 days. But Michael, one of the chief princes, an archangel, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. Later in that. Daniel 10, verse 21, but I will tell you what is inscribed in the book of truth. There is none who contends by my side except against these except Michael, your prince, your prince being uh, the prince of Israel. Daniel 12, verse 1, at that time, at that time is what we're reading now in Revelation verse uh, 12, verse 7, shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people, that being the people of Israel. So now let's read on. War rose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting. Now many translations use the word fought as like in past tense, but fighting is a better translation against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So, 
Let me read this in a literal translation that might give us a little more insight. And there was war in heaven. Okay, so John is looking up and now he's seeing war in heaven. Michael and his angels to fight against the dragon. So uh, this is something in the future. And the dragon and his angels fought. And he did not prevail, nor was placed them still found in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown, the ancient serpent, or another translation could be snake. The being called devil and Satan, the deceiving the whole world. He was thrown to earth and his angels were thrown with him. So let's unpack some of this. Um, first and foremost, is this anything new? No, not really. This has already been explained by the prophet Daniel. So let's go there and look at a couple of passages. Daniel 8 verse 9. Out of one of them came another horn, that will be the Antichrist, which started small but grew in power to the south and to the east and towards the beautiful land. So that would be Israel. It grew until it reached the host of the heavens, and it threw some of the starry hosts down to the earth and trampled them. Because of rebellion that occurred in heaven, the Lord's people and the daily sacrifice were given over to it. So that would be Jacob's trouble and the great tribulation, the middle of the, of the 77. It prospered in everything he did, and truth was thrown to the ground. And we read on in verse 15 of Daniel 8. While I, Daniel, was watching the vision and trying to understand it, I heard a man's voice from the Uli calling, Gabriel, tell this man the meaning of the vision. Son of man, he said to me, understand that the vision concerns the end, the time of the end. When rebels have completely, when rebels have become completely wicked, a fierce looking king, a master of intrigue will arise. He, that being the Antichrist, will become very strong, but not by his own power. This is power that will be given to him. He will cause astounding devastation and will succeed in whatever he does. He will destroy those who are the mighty, the holy people. And then he summarizes saying, the vision of the evenings and mornings that has been given to you is true, but seal up the vision for it concerns the distant future, that being the end of time. And then we get to the very important chapter of Daniel 12. At that time. At that time is what we're reading now in Revelation 12, verse 7. Michael, the great prince who protects your people, that being the, the Jewish people, will arise. There will be a time of distress. So as a result of this, we will see Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation. Such has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, and that will be the Jewish remnant, everyone whose name is found written in the book will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life. So this is the resurrection, the rapture. Others to shame and everlasting, everlasting contempt. And that will be the second resurrection, the second death, the great white throne judgment. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness. So there will be a lot of witnessing and evangelizing going on during this great tribulation in Jacob's trouble, but like the stars forever and ever. How long will it be before these astonishing things are fulfilled? It will be for a time times 
and half a time. Three and a half years, the last half of Daniel's 70th seven. When the power of the holy people has been finally broken, which directly refers to Jacob's trouble, all these things will be completed. So, let's read on what happens. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers, our, our fellow brethren, Christians and saints, has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. Now, we've already read something very, very similar in the chapter before at the sounding of the seventh trumpet. So we'll read that in Revelations 11:15, where the seventh angel blew his trumpet. And there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, or his Messiah. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. Let's read on. Verse 11. And they, and who's they? That's the Christians, the saints, um, have conquered him. How? And conquered who? The Antichrist. How? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they loved not their lives, even unto death. A very important passage here. Uh, first and foremost, the New Testament Greek word for testimony is martyria. That's where we get the word martyr. And if you look at it from that perspective, point of view, it makes greater sense, considering that the next words are what? For they love not their lives, even unto death. They realize that they're not home yet. We're not home yet. Home is after we pass, we have a resurrected body, and we will be with our King. So this is a critical verse. Uh, it, it, makes, it is both a statement, a fact, but it's also, more importantly, a pastoral appeal, an appeal that's found in Revelation, the Christian war book. So the question is, what is our role as Christians in all this? Especially if there is persecution. What, how do we act? What do we do? Do we run and hide? Do we go underground? Uh, do, we, uh, do we fight? Do we stand firm? Well, let's look at some passages. Luke chapter 9, verse 23, these are the words of Jesus. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily. And so often we forget that taking up a cross daily, that cross is an execution stake. All right? And follow me. He says later in Matthew 10, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Well, we definitely will be like sheep in the midst of wolves in this setting. So what? So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Paul in Ephesians 6.11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, this world that we live in, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, what do we do? We take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to what? To withstand, to oppose, to resist, to stand out against 
in the evil day. And having done all, to stand firm. So, what is our role as Christians? Well, to deny ourselves, to take up our cross daily, to be wise as serpents, to be innocent as doves, uh, to have the full armor of God on so that we can stand against the schemes of devils. And after, um, and after all of that, to continue to stand, to withstand, to stand firm in the evil day. So hopefully that helps us to answer how, what we need to do. Verse 12. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Why? Because Satan and his angels, they are kicked out finally, once and for all, permanently, never to come back. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath. Why? Because he knows that his time is short. He only has three and a half more years until he's chained up for a thousand years. And when the dragon saw that he'd been thrown down to the earth, what did he do? He pursued the woman, Israel, who had given birth to a male child. Now, the word here, he pursued, the woman pursued, is the Greek word dioko. And dioko not only means to pursue, but guess what? It also means to persecute. So the pursue and the perse persecute, you put those all together, and we have a much better understanding of the role of, of the, the serpent here. Let's read on. And when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to earth, he pursued the woman, which we just talked about. But the woman was what? Given the two wings of a great eagle, so that she... This now is the remnant of Israel, might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is to be nourished for what? A time, times, and half a time. Once again, three and a half years, that last three and a half years, there's a lot of things going on in this last three and a half years that is being covered in uh, Revelation and Daniel. Okay, the woman was given two great wings of a great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness. Now, to a first-century Christian church audience, especially those that are Old Testament literate, what's the first thing that comes to their mind? Exodus. And why Exodus? Because in chapter 19, starting verse 3, Moses went to God, and the Lord Yahweh called to him from the mountain and said, this is what you're to say to the descendants of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. So hopefully that gives a good... Uh, explanation of what this is all about this is once again this is the lord rescuing the lord rescuing his people well you got all sorts of interpretations and uh, you have a lot of western theologians uh, coming from a country that i am most familiar with they're saying well wait a minute wings of a great eagle look at the u.s seal that's the wings of a great eagle that's us and uh, you have some that have suggested uh, that, uh, like Hal Lindsey, that says, ah, this is probably the sixth fleet in the Mediterranean airlifting evacuees to Petra. I don't know what to say, but uh, Revelation is about Israel, about the Middle East, about the Jewish people, about Mount Zion, Mount Jerusalem. I'm afraid... Um, the United States is not the hero in this story. Let's read on. Verse 15. The serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to help to the help of the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from its mouth. I mean, first and foremost, remember, this, these are signs that we're seeing. So there's a lot of metaphor. Metaphorical uh, 
uh, representation here. So first of all, verse 15, the sweeper away with a flood. Floods quite often in the Bible were associated with an invasion. And here's a couple of examples. Uh, Job 27, 20. Terrors overtake him like a flood in the night. A whirlwind carries him off. And in Psalms 88, 16. Your wrath has swept over me. Your dreadful assaults destroyed me. They surround me like a flood all day long. They close in on me all together. Another very important passage in all this is Isaiah 28, 14 through 19, that gives a much more complete story of what's going on at that point in time. Verse 16, but the earth came to help to the help of the woman. That is um, the wilderness, the place of God, the place that God has prepared. That refuge uh, is, is what has come to rescue uh, the woman, the, uh, the remnant of Israel. But there's also a little bit of similarity between the parting of the Red Sea, what happened there that saved the Jewish people, um, and uh, destroyed Pharaoh and his armies as well. So once again, there are some parallels in Exodus. Let's read on though, verse 17. Then the woman, correction, then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on what? The rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And he stood on the sand of the sea. So the, so the dragon went off to make war against the rest of her offspring. Remember, all this goes back to the Garden of Eden, where God pronounced on, on the serpent that uh, the seed of the woman, her seed, is going to crush your head. Um, so that's... The beginning of all this story. However, in this text here, it specifically refers to Christians. Now, they could be Jewish Christians, they could be Gentile Christians, it doesn't matter. It's referring to the church. Why? Because these folks hold to the testimony of Jesus. And on that note, testimony of Jesus. The word testimony here is martyria, where we get the word martyr. Here's another example of a few verses earlier. They triumph over him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death, which we had discussed earlier. So that completes chapter 12. And now we're going to go into uh, part two of this video. Um, that will be chapter 13 that will introduce us to the first and the second piece.